Hey, what's going on everybody? Jake Verden Tech here, back with another video. If you guys follow the channel, you probably saw last week that I unboxed the Elgato 4K60 Pro capture card. I did a brief video on why I chose that capture card and the setup that I decided to go with, along with a brief install. So now that a little bit of time's gone by and I've gotten to use the Elgato 4K60 Pro, I'm not necessarily doing a full review video, but I want to go over some of the features that I've really utilized lately and that I've really enjoyed using with this capture card. The main feature that I've taken advantage of and what's really wanting me to make this video is the instant game view. And if you guys remember me talking about this in my last video, instant game view is that extremely low latency game capture to where the game that you're capturing when you pull it up in your software there's very little latency to where you can play it pretty much in your streaming software now this might sound kind of weird and undesirable but it's really cool actually and if you configure the screens right it'll look pretty nice and it's basically like you're playing your consoles through windows so the way i have it set up right now either on my nintendo switch or my xbox one s I'll run an HDMI cable from one of those devices, whichever one I'm using, and I'll plug it into the HDMI in on the Elgato capture card. And at that point, you just pull up your software on your PC in which the Elgato game capture card is in, and it'll just stream to the software. And I don't run an HDMI out lately because of that instant game view being very little, very low latency. But in this video too, we're going to be doing a test comparing the HDMI out versus the instant game view. So we'll get to see when you actually plug a monitor in versus streaming it, how it looks and if there is any latency. Obviously, if you're somebody playing a very competitive FPS and you're trying to get the most performance possible, it is more than likely best to go ahead and plug in a monitor. But if you're kind of playing casual or something that isn't as fast paced and as competitive, um, the instant game view will work just fine and like I said we're going to compare the two side by side and see if there is a performance hit if you just use instant game view. So why would anybody just want to use instant game view and just play their game through their streaming software on their consoles? I think it's just form factor for me. I think it's a neat way to interact with the devices. Personally I like being in this space you know playing my console games opposed to like the tv setup which i have right behind here so typically when i would play on my console in many cases i still just want to you know play some console games maybe games that my friends aren't playing like if i want to play my nintendo switch which i don't do a lot of multiplayer in so i would basically turn on the switch run it on my tv setup here i'd have the tv torn turn towards me right here and I would play from right here, and it was okay. And meanwhile, I'd have my headphones on, my microphone here, and I'd be talking to my friends in like Xbox Console Companion, Steam, Discord, that kind of stuff. Um, there was kind of a disconnect though, because I wouldn't be hearing the audio coming from the TV because I had my headphones on and I was talking to my friends. So that was one downside to playing the consoles normally and then you know chatting with friends which is kind of a multitask and like i said there's a disconnect there running this setup where you have instant game view is pretty sweet because it all kind of connects if i'm in a party on xbox or in a chat discord chat steam whatever it is if i'm in a chat with my friends and we're not playing the same game and i want to fire up a console do just play play a game by myself I can do that in here, have the audio from the consoles and the video go to my Windows computer, so I'm playing that, and I still have the audio from my chat, and I'm using my regular Blue Yeti microphone, which is hooked up to my PC, my Logitech uh, G Pro X headphones. So it's like my normal PC setup, but I'm just throwing the console in and playing it through my PC, and I get all the other added stuff that I do on my PC along with it, which makes it really cool and that's what I've really taken advantage of lately. That was kind of hard to explain so hopefully I didn't make that too confusing. Alrighty guys, I want to give you a visual for what I was just talking about. This is a prime example right here. So as you can see, this is the Xbox home screen that I have. 
and it's actually being streamed right now through OBS I just had it in full screen so this is your typical OBS screen so right now it's kind of I had it set up for ultra wide because that's where I mostly be playing my consoles but if I just go in here and go to full screen projector and select the monitor I want we have our Xbox console right there in full screen and as far as the hardware and wiring goes like I said you have right now it's going from my Xbox one S which is all the way over here that's the TV setup I was talking about sorry it's kind of dark over there but the Xbox one S has an HDMI cable running behind my desk it's actually this gray braided that silver and gray braided cable so it's that HDMI running from the Xbox One S into the Elgato 4K 60 Pro. And we do not have an HDMI out going to any of these monitors. So we're just viewing it through OBS, which is really neat. Like I said, so it doesn't mess up my configuration here because I could run the HDMI out into this monitor. That wouldn't be an issue. But the only thing is I would lose it in Windows. So I'd have icons. All this stuff would move over here because Windows is like, hey, you're missing a screen. Stuff like that. But so instead, right now, we're just streaming it through OBS Studio. And like I said, it's really flexible with the monitors. So you can basically put it in any of these. Um, the windowed source is pretty cool. So it'll open it up in a window. I don't know how it looks ultra wide. About the same but it fills up the 16 by nine monitors very well. So we have that, and like I said guys, I can, so basically I'll put on my headset, which is plugged into my computer. So is this Blue Yeti mic. That's what I use, that's my headset mic configuration when I'm gaming. So my voice is getting picked up by the Blue Yeti. My audio is getting picked up where I'm hearing everything through my Logitech G Pro X. And basically I can be in a chat like Steam, whatever, and I can still hear the audio coming from the HDMI of the Xbox. And it's being projected through OBS Studio, which is really neat guys. So. It's everything kind of being sunk together and all being played through my PC. So the PC is like the hub for it. And like usual guys, if you hit Windows G, you'll have all kinds of quick settings you can adjust. I mainly refer to the audio one here. If I want to adjust the audio in game, or if I want to adjust my chat volume, maybe I want to turn it down a little. Um, same deal with this so if your console is too loud and you want to hear your friends a little bit more you can turn it down by hitting for mine showed up as window projected source and then it says Elgato 4k 60 so that's the audio coming from my console so I can adjust that all there so after going over the setup I know a lot of people are thinking maybe this isn't something they'll use but if you're in the same boat as me this is really cool to have and it makes life a lot easier and it makes gaming on consoles and receiving the video and audio to your Windows PC a lot more convenient and a lot more comfortable for me. So maybe it would be the same for you too if you're in a similar setup situation. So next in this video guys we're going to be doing a side by side comparison on these two monitors up here. We are going to have one showing the instant game view through the Elgato 4K60 Pro. And then we're going to have an HDMI out going to the other monitor. So that'll be a native HDMI opposed to streaming it. And we're going to see the comparison if there's any latency in the instant game view opposed to the hardwired HDMI.
So gaming in this configuration where I had instant game view on one monitor and native HDMI out on the other monitor was a really cool test and I was very surprised with the results. Looking at both displays, I didn't see any sort of visual lag or latency between the two monitors and I didn't see much of a advantage with the HDMI out. As I played Super Smash Bros Ultimate, I made sure to take turns between the HDMI out display and the instant game view display to see if I had any sort of visual latency or control input lag. I thought Super Smash Bros Ultimate would be a good test being that it's very fast paced usually a lot of explosions and different stuff that could perhaps render some latency and frame rate drops. I didn't necessarily feel any sort of delay as the player, but I did notice the clock was slightly off between the native HDMI out display and the instant game view display. Looking at the Super Smash Bros. game clock, we can see that there's a 0.03 millisecond difference between our native HDMI out display and the instant game view display. For somebody that plays casually like me, I wouldn't have noticed this if the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate didn't have the game clock, but for somebody competitive, this could possibly make a difference. Lastly, I threw in a recording playing some Killing Floor 2 on the Xbox One S, as even the game capture recordings can pick up a lot of times any sort of frame rate drops, any sort of connection delays, and stuff like that, so it's also not too bad of a test. Playing Killing Floor 2, I didn't notice any visual input lag or any control input lag, but I can assume from our last test that maybe there was a 0.03 millisecond delay between the instant game view visual and the HDMI out visual. So that is going to conclude this video. Thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any Elgato products that support instant game view, if you utilize it and play your consoles through Windows. My final thoughts on this subject, I will continue to use Instant Game View as I really like this way of interacting with my consoles, mainly for the sole purpose of multitasking and having my console audio and video stream to my PC and then also receive audio from my chat service that I'm using. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you in the next video.